NCAA and the SEC have decided to put pressure on the state of Mississippi to change their state flag. For those that don't know, the state of Mississippi flag in the bottom, or sorry, in the top left-hand corner has the rebel flag, the Confederate flag, centered right there for everybody to be able to see. Everybody across the United States knows what that flag is, and they all understand. Uh, Ben jumps in already. He said, that thing's ugly anyways. Agreed. It certainly is. Um, But in 2001, it was voted on by the residents of the state of Mississippi that they wanted to keep the flag. Now, a lot has changed in the last 19 years. Um, Here we go. Ben said, it's like a Dutch Confederate mix. Uh, And then William Brown jumped in and said, you guys are better than ESPN. Real sports fans need Chris and Gary. Yeah, we appreciate that. Appreciate appreciate that. that. Thank you. Uh, and Tim jumps in. He said, what's up, fellas, on a coronacation quarantine? That's what I'm talking about. So get on it again. All right, Ben said, vote again. That's the deal. Uh, the governor of the state of Mississippi has said, this was voted on in 2001. Everybody wanted to keep it. We're going to keep the flag, right? Now, that was before the SEC came out. Greg Sankey uh, put out a statement and said that uh, that they were not going to allow the state of Mississippi to host any SEC championship activities, which, to me, was a bit of a hollow threat. There are that no was SEC. Like, listen, yeah. listen, that was like somebody in the world that oversees all of the relationships from every woman on the planet saying, Chris, no nine or tens for you ever. Yeah. Like, okay, okay uh, that's not really a threat. because that's just not not, like Mississippi has never hosted an SEC championship thing that I know of in the 38 years that I've been alive. The only championship event that Ole Miss has hosted uh, was a rifle tournament, but that's not SEC. That's Mark. That's a great American That wouldn't even be an SEC event. Exactly. So, So that's uh that's a strange thing. The basketball Shocking tournament Shocking and sad be. that the SEC doesn't have rifle. We need to add that. We need to get that. We shoot pretty good down here in the south. Oh, you got that right. But there, uh, here's the thing. It is uh it is a cost expenditure. So <laughs> there's not a lot that are going to be able to do it, right? So uh, there's I take that back. Every one of the the schools in the SEC could do it if they wanted to. Yes. They um, absolutely could do it. But there's no revenue for it. So it that's is what fine. it is. Um it says so the ESPN article says Mississippi is the only state affected by the policy change. It is the only state flag that continues to feature the banner of the Confederacy, which is a blue cross with 13 white stripes. Um, basically, the, and this is an ongoing thing, right? The NCAA expanded its Confederate flag policy on Friday to prohibit all championship events from being held in states where the flag is flown. So the SEC did theirs yesterday. The NCAA, the NCAA actually has teeth. The NCAA came out today, and this was the quote from Michael V. Drake, chair of the NCAA Board of Governors and the Ohio State President. He said, There is no place in college athletics or the world for symbols or acts of discrimination and oppression. We must continually evaluate ways to protect and enhance the championship experience for college athletes. Expanding the Confederate flag policy to all championships is an important step by the NCAA to further provide a quality experience for all participants and fans. Now, Really, this was first adopted because the Confederate flag, the rebel flag, was flown over the, uh, over, not City Hall, what's the, what's it called? The state capitol, the state capitol building in South Carolina, right? In Mississippi, that's built into the state flag. So, it didn't really affect the state of Mississippi. In South Carolina, it was just the rebel flag flown over the state capitol. That's and they right. finally it was, it was not a it was not a recognized state or government flag. Exactly. So finally in 2016 or sorry in 2015 that flag was taken down, everything went back right. to being fine. The issue here is that NCAA championship sites where where we talked about the SEC is never going to host a, a basketball tournament at Bancor South Arena in Tupelo or something like that. It, you're not going to have that issue, right? The SEC <laughs> no, championship football game happening. Ain't going to be yeah. played on Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. That's not happening. So, the SECs didn't really have any teeth. Um, no. The NCAA does, right? Ben 100%, jumps in. baby. Oh, yeah, because, look, the biggest thing here is Mississippi State and Ole Miss are big-time college baseball schools. 
That's yes, they sir. Are big they put it. large sums of resources into college baseball, and they are very enthusiastic about being competitive in baseball. Not everybody is. Mississippi is big time, big time. So, uh, with that said, Ole Miss and Mississippi State stopped flying the state flag in 2016. Correct. They have yeah, come we, out. They don't the even flag. have the state flag, even though they are state uh, institutions, universities. Yeah, they do not fly that state flag. Um, That's right. So Ben jumps in. He said, uh, "Softball attorneys, though." Uh, Tyrone Davis jumps in. Said, "Hey guys, Tyrone, good to see you in here." And Ben asked, uh, "Or sorry, William said, shouldn't be allowed to fly Confederate-looking flags at state-funded universities." Sorry, but that's just an opinion. Well, I mean, they stopped in 2016. Yeah, so that's well, and the problem is, is it's it's the it's the state flag. It's the state flag, and it's a state university. The state really pushed back and was just like, "Hey, man, yeah. you know, we it's the taxpayers that offset a lot of your university, and you're not going to put the state flag up." Nope. Nope, they they are not. They and they took it you down. You got it. You got it. Uh, ben jumps in and said, "As Mississippians, would you guys change it?" Yes. For yes, those, hey, hey, so so for I, those that I, don't know, I, by the way, we do both live in the state. We are residents right. of the this, state. This of is our flag. This is our flag yeah. that we're talking about. We we have authority to speak on this. This is our flag. Okay. And and I'll, I'll tell you one thing that that this matters to me now. Because you talked about how he said 19 years ago. Well, hey, 19 years ago, 19 years worth of 18-year-olds weren't allowed to vote then. So you you have almost 20 years of new voters coming in. That, that I, I had just turned 18 19 yeah. years ago. So I, I was allowed to vote. And and I, I, would, I, I, I don't know that I've said this on the show before. I think I have. But, but I, I chose not to. I, I absolutely didn't get out and didn't vote. And the immature and childish reason that I used 19 years ago was I thought the proposed new flag was ugly. Yeah. And, and I look back that at that now I'm, I'm very ashamed of that. Can't go back and change it, but I would really like my governor who I, I disdain <laughs> greatly, by the way. Um, I would like him to give me another opportunity to revote on that. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'll tell you this, there's a lot of other people that either did not vote the first time or voted to keep it the first time for whatever reasons. Many of us have changed our opinion. We have evolved as people. That's a good thing, and we should have the opportunity to re-vote on something that we voted on 20 years ago. Yeah. I get it. You can't re-vote on stuff every three to four years, all right? Can't just change as the wind changes. I understand that. But two decades go by. Yeah, I think I have a chance to say we got that wrong. Let's fix it. Yeah, agree. Matt Miller jumps in on YouTube, said the real question is why do people fly a flag from a war from a losing side? That is an interesting thing. I don't I don't know the answer to that. And and I've asked the same thing to many people that I am very close to that believe heavily in that flag. And I just I just don't get it. And I wish I could come up with a better analogy than the Nazi flag because that's just a rough. You're you're immediately going to turn your audience off as soon as you compare them to Nazis, and so I'm not trying to do that. But I would like to try to come up with a better analogy of another war that was fought and the losing side still lived there and didn't advertise or brandish their their side of things. I mean, you. I'm sure that there were people in the United States or in America that still wished for British rule back after the True. independence, you know. At, well, at the, I don't I would know imagine. about that. I, I don't know that there were a lot. That might have been a pretty unanimous belief. It, maybe so, but even still. If you like, were a British sympathizer, it was strictly because you were afraid they were going to win and you just wanted to be on the winning side, but nobody wanted those taxes. Uh, you may be right. You may be right. Either way, look. But, yeah. People don't typically fly the flag of losers unless you're in college football, and it doesn't matter. Your fandom is going to override everything, whether you win or lose, regardless, right? right. Um, (laughs) Ben said they were all tarred and feathered. Yeah, I guess. Like all the ones that were English supporters, I suppose so. It was different times back then. Um, There weren't weren't any left when it was over. I know that. uh, Matt said, I live in the North, and I was wondering, do you still feel the North and South are just two different places? In my opinion, I feel they are. Uh, Yes, but we're all part of the the same ecosystem. Right, I, I would I would like to challenge a lot. Of, so my family, large section of my family, is from Cleveland, Ohio. You don't get a whole lot more north than that until you get to agreed. the coast. Okay, 
They border Canada, all right? Um, they're, they've got racism issues up there as well. Boston, a city that I love and close to my heart, had historically a very prejudiced and racist issue. They didn't have slaves, but they had a strong dislike for people who didn't look like them. I, while we do live in two different parts of the country and they are almost like leaving one country and going to another, that other side just thinks they're a lot better. I've seen a lot of both sides. There's a lot of uh, elitism in, in the North. Yeah. They, is, they, don't, they don't advertise it and proclaim it the way the Southerners do, but a lot of that hatred and dislike is there. A lot of that treating black people like second-class citizens is still there. They just don't think they do it. They feel as if they are better than that. But the way they live, their neighborhoods, the way they treat them, it it ain't any different, man. But Boston has a, a larger like Irish contingency, right? Big Irish, big Italian, yeah. and and a big black contingency, and those three just seem to not get along. Yeah. So it's it, and, yes, and the, the difference is is the the Irish and the Italian guys look a lot alike, even though they still hate each other. And so we don't judge that the way we do when one of them hates on the black communities because, and and they strictly don't like one another because of where they come from. I mean, that is, that is it. Hang on. We are, I'm speaking with a broad brush for Boston from years ago. I do think that Boston has changed a lot, a lot in the past 10 to 20 years. Yeah. Matt Miller said Boston is by far the most racist city in the North and is not close. And I think it's, I think it's because of that. I think it's because of who lives there and it's not everybody. Of course, it's not everybody in the South, but if you want to know is, is none of those people, are from America, by the way. All of Boston was almost all immigrants. Those yeah. Irish people that didn't like the Italians and didn't like the black people, they were not American Irish back in that. They, they had moved here from Ireland. They were immigrants. Yep. The Italians, the exact same thing. They moved here from Italy. It wasn't an, uh, 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 an American thing of go back to your country because none of those people were from this country. And now, to get back to the question of difference between North and South, yes, there is a bit of a difference. In the South, uh, there's more yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, whatever. You go a little north, and it's you know every man for himself, right? It's it, there's a there's just a difference, right? So, and then it cuts off somewhere in the Midwest, like before you get out west, because out west is completely different than than the North and the South as well. So right. it it's like there's three different, or maybe even four, if you count the Midwest as a different section. So, yeah, there's a difference in the way that uh, the people are treated, in the way that people feel about certain things, et cetera. Um, but to be honest, like, between social media and the the Internet and being able to connect everybody and everybody traveling everywhere for work and stuff like that, I think it's getting to be uh, a little more of, of – it's less of a melting pot, right? The world, no, it's more of a. It's melting more pot. of a melting pot. The yeah, world, excuse me. The world has become a very small place. Yes, in, I mean that, that's it. So. We we are shrinking as a world. There was a day and a time where people from Mississippi would never make their way to Cleveland, Ohio, or Boston, Massachusetts, and now it kind of happens all the time. Yeah, it's just and easier people from to up get there everywhere. would never come down here, and now it kind of happens all the time. It's just. It's the way the world has gone. We've gotten smaller. We're getting, I do believe 100% we're getting better. Um, and and we're going in the right direction. Mississippi's got to get fixed. I want to address the north-south thing, by the way. Hey, before, we have manners. Before you do that, yeah. let me let me hop on this. Uh, Jose said, uh, back in the days they did with kindness, now they blunt straight shooters. Uh, ben said, neighborhoods out west are the same most of the time, but Californians definitely think they're above that when in reality, not really. And Matt said, I'm from the middle of Ohio, so I shouldn't have said the north. All right, continue on. Well, the middle of Ohio is the north. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's northern. So, so from the south, we have we have manners. I use the word manners in quotations because we I, I grew up, I say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir, to everyone. And that is not an old thing. When I got went to Boston, when I go to Cleveland, I get yelled at by people. Oh, you make me feel old. I, I say it to three-year-old girls. Okay. It's just the way I was raised and I'll always do it. The new binary gender thing is really messing with me because I feel like I'm okay calling you whatever you want to be called, but I need to know what you want to be called because I'm going to refer to you as ma'am or sir. I I just, I, I have, it's in my, it's been beat into me. Okay. Let's just say that I was raised by a single mother and she hit. 
and I was bigger than her, she didn't whip the butt with the belt. Okay. She just hit you in the face. Um, and, and it worked. My brother and I have very good manners. Uh, <laughs> but so saying that if I were go to a game by myself in Bush stadium down in, in, in St. Louis, very much the South or Atlanta or uh, Arlington in Texas, very much the South. And I showed up by myself for a ball game. Anybody around me might speak to me, whatever. We'll cheer for the same team. We'll root. We'll, we'll yell and scream. But when that game is over, we're all going to say goodbye, and we're going to go our separate ways. And that's that's going to happen 100% of the time. My first trip to Fenway was a couple of years ago. I went to Boston by myself on a trip. I spent three days in Fenway. All three days I sat in three different sections of the park. I ran into three completely different groups of people who immediately realized you're here by yourself. No, no, you're not. You're here with us. We're here together. They all took me to dinner or I took them to dinner. We ate, we drank, we hung out before or after the game at some point in time. And they welcomed me in like I was one of theirs. I could go to an Atlanta Braves game a hundred times. I go to all 82 games in Atlanta and not ever that happen yeah it's it's southern hospitality is not the thing that we used to advertise it being and the welcoming and opening of arms of people from the north has been greater than anything i've ever experienced from the south they don't say yes sir and they don't say no sir and they don't hold open doors or pull out chairs the way we do but they absolutely welcomed me in as a stranger and accepted me for who i was and made me feel like i belong there now we'll say this college football a little different because different places that I've been, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, uh, Athens, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it doesn't matter what side you're on. Um, they, a lot of them will welcome you in. And well, tailgating is different. Yeah, tailgating, tailgating is, is a big thing. Tailgating is totally different because you're there for a minute and then you leave. Uh, but, but inviting but we, a stranger that you sat next to during a game no, no, to dinner and drinks with you and your wife afterwards is that's it's a that's different. a whole different deal, but yes, like inside the stadium, they've invited us back to tailgates and stuff like that. Yeah. And yes, it's a little different, but either way, uh, Ben said if you don't say yes, ma'am or yes, sir down there, will people give you bad looks a hundred nope. times over? I don't think so. Oh, I think I we have so. I think we have enough enough outsiders around here that don't say yes, sir and no, sir. And, and maybe yes, it's not a big no deal man. anymore. That it's not a big deal anymore at all. No, I think we have enough transplants because Memphis has boomed over the last 10 years especially yeah um that 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 is no longer an issue you're not frowned upon um i just i definitely noticed that it stands out when i have visited san diego when i have visited places deep outside of the south boston cleveland those places well, I've, I've had it happen for sure in uh in chicago and in san yeah. francisco yeah yeah so no I'm with you. Uh, ben said, uh, just thought I should know in case I make a trip down south. Yeah, come on down. It's no, nobody, nobody will look down on you if you don't say yes, ma'am, and no. Yeah. And my it, wife, it, this is, she wasn't raised that way. She likes the idea of it. She appreciates the manner part, but it just wasn't beat into her the way it was me. And so she doesn't say it. Nobody's ever judged her. How about this? It, it depends on where you go. So we'll, well say maybe. that. Uh, Michael said, I think family means more in the south. They're raised differently down there, and I appreciate that. Yeah, in some cases, but I, hey, in Boston, I guarantee you, family means a ton. I was so, just about to say, yeah, no, just family depends. means a lot more up there. I don't know. I, I just think family means family is important everywhere. You, you, no yeah. one, no one has the the patent on values, and 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 our values are more valuable than others. It so. really depends on the family, really. <laughs> that's that's. But the we're truth. so you and I are both in agreement to get back to the state flag. Yes, we're in agreement. We would like another opportunity. Yes. If Kate Reeves can hear our voice, listen. Forget about the mean things to say about you on Twitter, and give me another opportunity, and it will absolve some of the things that I think about you. Yes, I I agree with that. I think giving here's the my, people a here's chance. Here's my problem. I know I'm interrupting you, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. Here's my problem. If we put it to a vote, Mississippi votes to keep it. That's going to really upset me, and it's going to make me mad. And I don't know how to fix that. I don't know that you have to put this up to a vote. I see you don't have to put it up to a vote. He can change it. He doesn't want to change it. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this: I can send a picture out right now from one of his campaign campaign speeches that didn't have the state of Mississippi flag across the bottom of it four times, but it had nothing but the rebel flag four times across the bottom of one of his campaign speeches. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so he doesn't he want does to not, change it. He does not want to change it. Um, now, with that said, we both want it changed, obviously. But I want to bring up, and, and you kind of talked me off the ledge here, um, but it, it, it feels a little like bullying, right? They, they did this to North Carolina uh, back when the, uh, the, the bill was put through for the uh, trans bathroom bill and all that kind of mess, right? Like they, they took the NBA All-Star game out and the NCAA yeah. took away all of the, the different events and all that kind of stuff, right? And they tried to force them into doing whatever. And yeah. eventually, yes, it got changed back. Uh, Michael said, that's true. I guess I mean more family get-togethers and cookouts. Yeah, that's 100% true. He said, I, 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 I grow every Sunday, yeah. no matter what. We go to Momaw's house for, for, for lunch, for, for Sunday dinner. Oh, yeah. And it's me, my aunts, my, my large Italian Catholic family. Momo is gone. Papa has been gone forever. And that still happens. There you go. There you go. All right, so what I was leading into... Uh, yes, we, we have focused on Mississippi because the rebel flag is the most distinguishable. It is the most identifiable uh, flag of all of them. However, uh, we're also going through a shift where statues are being taken down, where chants, like at the University of Florida, they are taking away the gator bait chant, which nobody knew had racial undertones, but it absolutely does. Nobody has said a word about the state of Georgia's flag. And the state of Georgia's flag was the official first flag of the Confederacy. And and they threw a little picture in between the uh, the circle of stars, but it is the original stars and bars of the Confederacy. And nobody has said a word about that. Now, Chris told me that it is because nobody really notices it as that. Nobody knows what it is. But if we are in the business of changing things, uh, I don't understand why you would just do Mississippi and not do Georgia as well, right? And, and my reasoning was, well, they don't want to mess with Georgia because they host Final Fours in Atlanta and they host uh, national championship games and the SEC championship and et cetera, et cetera, on down the line, right? They don't want to mess with that. But Mississippi is an easy target because at worst, you're not going to be able to host a regional, right? So talk me out of this. Do you really think that it is just because nobody associates the the state of Georgia flag 100%. with that? I didn't know that until you told me that. And I've lived in the South my entire life. I would bet 80% of the people that live in Georgia don't know that. that is, we I know that what the Confederate school. flag is. We know what that is. Everyone in the country knows the Confederate flag and can recognize it. Nobody, nobody could point out that the Georgia state flag was a Confederate flag. Uh, no, but it's just all about what you know, what's common knowledge, what's not, and and that's it, that's just all there is to it. Is you can't you can't hold everybody to a standard of something that's hidden in the dark. Well, and, and true, Ben jumped in and said, uh, "UT like Texas is about to lose the eyes of Texas cheer, right. right?" And yeah. and yeah. that's been going on for ever. And I doubt that very many people nowadays know that it has racial undertones, but. It's going to be changed because people have learned. They have educated themselves on this. Uh, Michael on YouTube said, you promote what you permit, need to call people out, otherwise change won't happen. 100%. Michael Fritch on Twitch said, my issue with changing things for any specific group of people is where does it end? I understand that, right? I I am anti-cancel culture. However, if we're going to be doing all of this anyway, um, it, it needs to be across the board. We need to go I on and get this stuff out I believe there's a difference here. between cancel culture. Me and you talk about this yeah, all yeah, the time yeah, yeah. off air. This is not cancel there's culture to change this big flag. difference between cancel culture and realizing what is right and what is wrong. Just because this is the problem with cancel culture is when you make a perfectly reasonable request to cancel something that needs to be canceled and we give in, cancel culture immediately says, thank you very much. I'll take that mile. And I'll take another mile. And then they reach for something that's not reasonable. That's the issue I have with cancel culture. But it doesn't mean that everything they want to cancel, they should, we should fight and they should not cancel. Some of these things, 20 years ago, I didn't have an opinion on the state flag. And that is shame on me. And, and I do think now, I've thought it for a while, we need, to, we need to change that. It needs to be changed. Yes, we're giving in to cancel culture. But it's still the right thing to do. And I can't not do the right thing just to piss those people off. 
there are other opportunities yeah, it's, it's where they're going to try to take something where I can stand up and call them, you know, call them out on it. And then because I was reasonable and I gave into the thing that was reasonable, I feel like that gives you a very good track record of telling them, Hey, I'm not just one of these guys that tells you to piss off every time you scream about something. I'll hear your argument. I'll weigh the case and I'll make a decision on, are you being extreme? Are you being ridiculous? Or is this a legit request? Yeah. Yeah. I just always want to be reasonable. Yeah. I think, I think that's, 100% 100% fair. 100% fair. Uh, jumping into the chat here, uh, Ben said, people don't know, or no, yeah, people don't know about the other flag, and it doesn't stand for the same thing as the battle flag. Um, it just doesn't It just doesn't mean as much to, to those people, to yeah. what no, said those people, to black people. It doesn't, it doesn't mean as much to them because that the rebel flag is what was hung when they were being hunted down when yeah. they were being lynched, when they were being drugged through streets. That's no one had the Georgia state flag. Okay. That's true. Nobody had that. That's true. They had, they had the rebel flag. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Joseph said, are the Redskins changing their name? Uh, at this point. I, now the one not. thing is, is that is a one man decision. Yeah. That's, that's Snyder. That's it. That is not that's a, a that, actually, that no one gets to vote on that. Ben that, just chimed in and said, can't tell him what to do And all 31 other owners and Roger Cadell will not tell him what to do. If he wants to be a bad guy, they will allow him to be that. Yes. Uh, Michael on YouTube said, it's not for a group of people, it's for people, the human race. Uh, I, I agree. I yeah, agree, but they agree. were the ones that were attacked by it. I, while while I don't like the flag, I was I was never attacked by it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's... Uh, the reason it became so well-known is Southern rock bands and T-shirt companies and... I mean, it, became, it was a marketing thing for yeah, Southern Rock. That's yeah, it. 100%. I mean, and does Kid that make Rock Leonard Skinner it terrible? No. Leonard Skinner is an amazing band. There's nothing wrong with that. They just grew up in a culture where that was a symbol of, of cool to them. The, the because most it was recent. rebellious. It was rebels. It wasn't about the what it, what it actually symbolized throughout history. They liked the rebellious side of it. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Like, it, it, was, it was Leonard Skinner. The most recent one was Kid Rock. Who had That's a big right. one up, and everybody threw like a, a big uproar about it, and and that's totally fair, right? Yeah. But however, with the country music scene that he was trying to become a part of, because remember he was a rock band at first, and then he delved into country and whatever. He was trying to win over country music fans, and he did successfully. Uh, I right. don't know that that's the correct way to go about it, but it is what it is. So uh, we'll jump off of that topic. We spent and we spent thirty minutes on that. <laughs> That's fine. The other one's but that's are pretty fine. Great. It was uh, it was it was worth discussing. Uh, one of these topics we're going to be real short on. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So this one maybe not so much. Um, let's dive into it. UCLA players 